Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Bleeding Cool's weekly recap of AP Bio, NBC's new sitcom starring It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia's Glenn Howerton and Happy's Patton Oswalt. Uh, this guy right here with the hat and the beard and all that stuff. My name is Ray Fluck. I'm television beat writer for Bleeding Cool, and we're going to get right into episode three which I'm assuming is episode three, so we're going to get started on something for a second. Uh, message to NBC. AP Bio is a good quality show that has a chance to really, really be even more than it is. Stop screwing it up. First, you premiere it before the Olympics. Okay, I get that. That's nice. A little preview. But now there's nothing except online to watch it during the Olympics. Then the Olympics are over, and you shoehorn the second episode at the end of the closing ceremonies that, to be honest with you, not a lot of people really knew about. And now today you're doing episodes three and four, but you're doing them in reverse. So you're actually doing Burning Miles at 9.30 and you're doing Overachieving Virgins at 8.30, which just means you're doing episode four instead of episode three on top of the fact that you have changed the time moving the show from 9.30 to 8.30. So in the span of only two episodes actually being broadcast, you have readily just really undercut this show. It's not like you haven't been to promotion or advertising for NBC, but you really, really are undercutting this show painfully, which sucks because it's a show that has a lot of potential. It early on strikes me a lot of Parks and Recreation in the sense that it's not perfect, but it has the strong potential to, to have a lot done with it if you just do a little, little tweaking and, and, and touch up on the characters. But anywho, I'm getting ahead of myself. So we're going to be looking at episode three, Burning Miles. And as you can tell from the title, Burning Miles, Jack's never-ending war uh, with Miles, who may or may not know that Jack has a war with him, uh, continues into this episode. And it starts off, first of our four storylines going on, is Jack versus Miles. And what we get in this episode, we get Jack, who original plan is to get one of the students to work on a British accent to call Miles, pretending to be his uh, British long-lost biological mother, because Miles was adopted, and to just hit him with these horrible sexual-based secrets or things about his past or stuff like that. So it kind of gives you an understanding of where uh, Jack's mindset is into the third episode. But we find out through a recommendation from one of the students that there is a bookstore at the mall that can possibly serve as Jack's sanctuary. See, he goes there to have a nice espresso and to position his chair and to enjoy some peace and quiet in his newfound fortress of solitude only to see a big cardboard cutout of Miles promoting his book. The question is the answer and it also, surprise, surprise, happens to be a stat pick. So needless to say, Jack's not too thrilled. So new plan. Jack's plan, get one of the students to get a job in there, to go inside, to undercut the staff pick, to get that cardboard cut out of there, and to enact deep, 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 strange revenge on Miles. So that is essentially our first plot line. Second plot line, Principal Durbin, Patton Oswalt, has got to do some budget cuts. It starts off with him trying to get Jack to pay, pay for the sign, but in typical Jack fashion, Jack doesn't have any interest in paying for the sign that he destroyed back in the first episode. So Durbin makes the rounds to try to find the best place to, to cut the budget. As you see in the episode, he ends up going right back to where he started and hitting upon the thing that Jack really doesn't even care about, his class. So we see how that works. Uh, we also have Helen. Uh, Paula Pell, who I, I'm, I'm, I'm becoming a humongous, humongous fan of, um, she has a, a bake sale going on that apparently all of the, the, the Rams, especially the teachers, are, are a part of. And she's cutting Jack a little slack, so he only has to do cookies. Uh, so that is a big, big help for him. But Helen is not taking no for an answer. Um, and then lastly, we have Dan, who, for those of you who don't know, uh, Dan was the student that uh, Jack brought into the class and this is his first time in the class, and we're realizing very quickly that Dan isn't fitting of the AP Bio kids. He's just moved in from Florida. He isn't sure how to get them to talk to him, and there's just a really, really, really great moment towards the end uh, where he, you, the use of Harry Potter and Dumbledore actually gets the conversation going. I know I'm speaking in general because I didn't want this to be a recap. I want this to be more of a review, and I'm going to talk about the four areas and touch upon some highlights. Overall, very good, very solid episode. I really, really enjoyed it. it. Again, it's not one of these shows that you're going to look at and go, oh my god, they're reinventing the wheel. This is the, the be-all and end-all of new comedy. It's not. It's, it's, you know, it's the same old classroom-type situation where we're, we're seeing the teacher starting to come around and we're starting to see the kids loosen up and we see the outsider who's not as cool as we think he is and he's quietly a geek and we find out he's secretly crushing on one of the students. We've seen this all before. But put that aside, how many sitcoms do we love where we've seen the same storylines and themes every single situation? 
The characters, however, are fantastic. We're starting to get a better sense for the students. I, I, I'm just loving so much more as a, as a, as a counterbalance to Jack. The Jack Durbin dynamic, I'm just loving, but Pat Oswalt is just awesome across the board. But the coach, whose name I'm forgetting, you've got Helen, you've got, again, you've got Steph, Lyric Lewis, and, and, and her teacher friends. It's just a really well-developing show. It's, it's one of these reasons why I don't like writing off shows after one episode. I feel like you have to give shows five or six episodes to really get a good feeling. And this is where that show is going. It's, it's, I'm really, really impressed with how they handle it. The Miles Jack thing, I was impressed because we get to see scenes in the episode where we get more so than you usually get to see, which is a character having a bit of a breakdown. We see Jack in his home and he's trying to call customer service and, and get Bartholomew's bookstore to take the stand down and explain why it shouldn't be a staff pick. We see him going through some serious issues and there were a moment or two where it felt uncomfortable, but not that it didn't belong uncomfortable. A good uncomfortable in the sense that I think on a, on a, on a background level that maybe they haven't scratched yet is we're we're seeing Jack dealing with some deeper harder issues than I think we we've let him be aware. There's that scene where he's explaining to one of the students why he has the issue with with Miles and he can't verbalize it and and you even see the looks on the students' faces that there's clearly a lot more going in there than we realize. Um, Durbin, Jack, again, I like that there is some movement in their relationship. I'd like to see a little bit more movement in their relationship because I don't want to see Patton Oswalt always playing the same role or the same character. And he's not here, but I'd like to see more movement with his character. If nothing else, you've teased him singing. I want I want to see Durbin sing. Okay, Get the man his budget, get him his karaoke machine, get him singing. I think that's what we really need to see. Um, Helen's bake sale, I can't say enough. Helen's just fantastic. Um, the, the monstrosity... That of, of just deliciousness that Jack ends up making just looks in, 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 incredible. And I do like the fact that it was basically attempting to one-up Helen. And Helen didn't take it as an insult. Helen took it as in, ah, gotcha. Gotcha on that one. The ram bit you, as she talks about it later on. And then we have the situation with Dan, which again is not, it, it's nothing new. It's very cliched. But there is that back and forth between Jack and Dan out by the dumpster when they're both eating. And there, there's a the rough scene where Dan's just like, I don't want to be like you. Your, your life's a mess. And, and I think Glenn Howard deserves a lot of credit for the way he not only portrayed like the hurt there, but several scenes in the episode where he portrayed where the, the it, it, there were a lot of things like the pity from the students that really, really seemed to hit close to home. So I thought that was really, really effective. Overall, I think this was a really good, solid episode. Uh, very curious to see what the fourth episode is going to be like or the third episode, depending on how they're I, – I, I don't know. Um, if I had to put this on a grading scale – uh, on a 1 to 10 scale with a Cusack scale, which, unless somebody tells me to go otherwise, I would put this episode around a 7, 7.5 on a Cusack scale. A couple highlights I want to talk about. Um, again, I just love the name of Bartholomew's Bookstore. Uh, if anybody thinks that wasn't a Barnes & Noble, you're in, you've never been to a Barnes & Noble. Um, I love the fact that we see a point where not only is Dan a geek, but Dan's drew, drew sketched a picture of Heather looking like Wonder Woman with her glasses and everything, and it's just, I'm sorry, I just think that's just got... Call, call me what you want. I think there's righteous cuteness factors there that are still going to come in play. So the Dan and Heather thing, I'm very looking forward to, to seeing how that plays out. Um, again, Helen has probably one of the best lines um, where uh, they're in the uh, office and Jack references about how Ram all Rams are, are males because Pam, uh, that Helen has called um, – one of the Rams, Pam, and he basically says, you know, Pam's a, a, a trans Ram. So I just, I thought that was very, very good. Um, the Jack Sarika dynamic, I think, has a lot of dividends still left to play. I'm very curious to see where her backstory goes and how that connects with Jack. Some people have commented on the line, like, are they going to have Jack and Sarika be in love interest? Like, no, I, I don't. Weird, and I just don't see that going on a whole lot of levels. However, Jack and Steph... Now that I would pay money to see because one, Lyric Lewis is just amazing and two, I just would, I'd just love to see that dynamic be fantastic. Um, and last but certainly not least, um, I, I, I just want to, uh, yeah, it um, the, the bake sale, that monstrosity, I cannot begin to, to, to level enough what the, the meaning behind that is because it, it raised a lot of interesting questions. First off, why does Jack bake naked? Or near naked, like down to the boxer shorts. I've always wondered that. And I, I, from what I understand, other people do that too. Um, I'm not quite sure about that um, and how that plays out. Um, I also find that interesting that it came at the tail end of after Jack set fire to the Miles standing. Because, Flash, just to make you guys aware, uh, he decides to basically take, take control into his own hands. Goes into the bookstore, grabs the stand, 
grabs some candy, runs out. Now, granted, he's never allowed back to his Fortress of Solitude again because Bartholomew's has pretty much blocked him for the, the remaining time that they're there. Um, but he has the satisfaction of sitting back, eating some candy, and watching Miles burn, and then going cooking up some amazing cream puffs with this monstrosity that's just beautiful. And I, I, again, I found it odd, I found it weird, I found it exhilarating for one simple reason. It's not often in a sitcom we get to see somebody who's going through some type of uh, a mental, emotional cycle. And with Jack, I think we're seeing that in the background. And I think a lot of times we, we, we get caught up in the laughter of it that we're not realizing the realities of what's taking place. So, again, AP Bio, I'm really impressed with it. We're three episodes in. There hasn't been a drop-off. I'm not tired of it. I like the comedy and the humor. It's not coming at me like 100 jokes a second, and it's not trying so hard. Uh, I love Glenn Howerton's subtle nuances and differences between Jack and Dennis that I think are growing with every episode. So again, three of us in, a good solid start. I wish NBC would, would handle it a lot better. Um, I will be back with episode four, which will be posting sometime later on Thursday after you see this one, because this one I think is going up at 7.15 East Coast time. So thank you guys for joining me. Hope you enjoy this. This guy right here, Ray Phillips, television beat writer for Bleeding Cool, will see you for episode four, uh, Overachieving Virgins, unless it changes to three, but we're just going to keep it with the way it is. But thank you guys for joining me. Look forward to seeing you with the recap tonight and also see you this weekend with some really cool Oscars and Walking Dead stuff. Thank you guys. Take care.